Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got energy efficient Luke. <laughs> I'm sorry. But <laughs> well done. I gave that away. Yeah, today we're talking about going green and green buildings and homes. Well, we kind of went two different directions on here, kind of unintentionally, but I think it's going to work. So I think it's double the information, double the fun, Luke. So I wrote down the words that came out of James's mouth two weeks ago. It says, let's do something on no carbon footprint homes. So I wrote that down, and then apparently he decided not to do the same thing I did. So you're going to get a take on buildings, like offices, yes. skyscrapers, skyscrapers, larger structures. And I'm going to talk all about like your house, really stuff that's going to mean more to our listeners than the stuff you're going to talk about, which is not as important as what I'm going to talk about. So our, our listener base has really climbed into the CEO category. Okay. Oh, so okay. they are concerned about their buildings. Okay. Okay. So green buildings and homes. And homes. Also known as green construction or sustainable design. Right? Refers to both structure and the application process. So being environmentally responsible and resource efficient throughout the building life cycle. And when you say resource efficient, it's it's the means by which the materials are made themselves. The way too. the materials are gathered, the way the materials are made and used. Okay. Uh, from planning of design, construction, operation, maintenance, all that stuff, even down to demolition. These are all things that are being considered when meeting the standards and guidelines. And there's actually organizations out there that certify buildings and certify, like, I think it's LEED? L -E -E yeah, I have some e info on that. E -E -D, I think there's multiple. I think there's two E's. I feel like there's like four. But... There might be seven E's. Okay. All right. So common green construction practices include using sustainable building materials, like recycled glass or recycled steel. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't see our here our episode on steel making process, go check that one out. But it's the most recycled material in the world. I think it's, it's easy to recycle. Right. And you basically just plentiful. dump it back in there and it yeah. doesn't lose its material properties. Mm -hmm. uh, also using renewable materials like bamboo or rubber in your design. And bamboo is not really renewable. It just grows like crazy. I mean, that's that's kind of renewable. Is that what that means? I think so. Okay. Sort of. Sort of not really. Installing energy efficient windows and doors. So this is probably something you're going to be talking about a yep. little bit more Double later pane on. Triple windows, triple pane, all that sort of triple stuff. Triple pane? Yeah. That sounds like a they, pain. They can put all, yeah, <laughs> all kinds of stuff with it. Using lower, uh, what is it? VOC. 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 Do you know that? Yeah. Volatile organic compound paints and stains. Our friends at PPG Paints probably know a lot about that. So if you're ever at Home Depot or Lowe's, woot woot, sponsors this week. Oh, nice. They're well not, played. They're not. Oh. Um, that's a big thing. And whenever you have ever painted, when it's like super stanky. <laughs> is that the technical term? <laughs> that's the technical okay. term. Super stanky. Uh, that is, it's <laughs> low VOC back in. <laughs> low VOC paints have less odor. Oh, okay. So... But the problem is, it costs more to of make low does. VOC paint. So if you get that oh, low VOC paint, more. it's like forty dollars a gallon versus you buy the stuff that kills you if you sniff it. It's like fifteen. But unlike you, I care about my carbon footprint, Luke. I kind of care about mine. Mm, I kind of think you. I don't. feel like your truck is bigger than mine. It just is. Saying. It is. Constructing green roof systems, which I think is interesting. Plants on your rooftop that offer many benefits, including. Like having an on-site garden, which is cool. Rainwater management. I could see you doing protection that. from UV light. I would like to do that. I think that would like be you, neat. I could Not in Pittsburgh, a, but well, like somewhere cool. I could see you doing like an earthen home. You're basically a farmer. I am basically a farmer. Yes, okay. I, and I'm basically a hobbit. So this mm. would really work out pretty well okay. for me. Adding water harvesting and purification systems. Also, water harvesting is illegal in some places. We yeah, just talked about in our water episode. Uh, maximizing natural light, which can cannot only save on lighting requirements, like if you have strategically placed windows and mm -hmm. whatnot, uh, but also therefore reduce energy costs and keep the building warmer or warmer in colder months. And I guess it keeps it colder. In and I think you feel. Months. I think you feel better too whenever you have more natural light. I think they do studies on that and say that's the case. And then also using renewable energy to power the building. So commercial solar systems and things like that and somebody just said we need to do an episode on 
on how unsustainable sustainable energy is or green energy is. Yeah, it's it's Which not it's not see. as green as you think it is. Yeah. So some of the benefits, and then we're going to get into homes. How about okay. that? Shoot. Healthier and happier workers, it turns out. Employees that work in green buildings report fewer headaches, which I was just talking about, about yeah. staring at my screen getting headaches, as well as improvements in asthma and allergy symptoms. Uh, reduced energy costs. So this is a big thing. I think in the home eventually, but in buildings too, where it might be more expensive up front, but then it really reduces the cost in the long run. Big time. And the ability to attract and retain top talent because youngsters these days, all the snowflakes out there really love this sort of stuff. Yeah, they so. don't care about the environment, apparently. <laughs> you say it like it's a bad Kids thing. Kids these days. The uh, greater likelihood a green building will sell for more money. So I guess that's something. And additional business opportunities that come with appealing to an ever-growing population that cares about this stuff. Fun I mean, fact. Shoot. Fun fact number one. 84% of consumers globally say they seek out responsible products whenever possible, though 81% cite availability of these products as the largest va- barrier to not purchasing. One, I don't seek them out. Two, the cost of them is the barrier, not not finding them. Yeah, I would say that's the case because you can, I mean... I think people lie on those yeah, surveys. Yeah, they do because they're, they're trying to make themselves feel better about themselves. Like, oh, I would if I could just find them. Right, yeah. You can order like motorcycles on Amazon. You can get solar panels. <laughs> you can get high efficiency light bulbs and wind. You can get anything on Amazon. Fun fact two. Shoot. 57% say they would purchase a product of lesser quality or efficiency if it was more socially or environmentally responsible. Mm, Lies. Yeah. 57% of you are lying. Yes. Okay. So that's all I had. How about we get into how do we make our home a better place for the world? Yeah. So so th- this is an interesting one because I, I think some of this stuff that you spoke about is kind of naturally happening uh-huh. with, with homes. They're, they're, they're using, you know, low Vox paints whenever they're, they're, they're painting uh, you can't basically get anything less than a double pane window. Uh, so I, I didn't want to focus on like the obvious things. I wanted to focus on more of either the cutting edge or newer type things that are happening. You with think homes. our listeners are on top of these things, so they're doing the obvious, and you want to just get them over the edge to make their homes amazing. Yeah, but what I did, <laughs> I did that. But the other thing that I did was I kind of tracked the costs oh, of what no. some of these take. Okay, that's and, interesting. And this is where the the problem occurs okay so um the very first thing that comes to mind and i always say to myself why doesn't every new construction home do this and this is installing solar roof panels okay so the average installation now keep in mind you have to point the right direction in the first place so not every house is available and you live in pittsburgh what but interesting so i have a a brother and sister-in-law that live in york pennsylvania which can't yeah (laughs) <laughs> which can't be any less cloudy than Pittsburgh. And they installed solar panels, and like everybody in their neighborhood installed solar panels, and none of them have electric bills. Interesting. So they get enough, even though you're in Pittsburgh, I think you get, I think that, I think it's kind of, um, it's not true that you need to have like 80% or 90% sun. Even though we're pretty cloudy here, I think that, or as we say in Pittsburgh, cloudy. 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 Um, the problem is the average cost for a typical solar array that would power a home and do everything you need for a home to be completely independent on the electric grid, and this is before tax credits, is $30,000. Ouchie. So now you do wow. get like... And so that's ta- to do the roof, like with so that's Elon do, solar... No, th- no, this is not roof. Elon's. Oh, this, this is, is not just Elon's. putting... This is just getting the, the, the regular solar okay. panels. This okay. isn't the solar So they're ugly, yet. too. Okay. They're ugly. Uh, if you're in high wind areas, they can be damaged. The warranty on them is only a couple of years. And they fail, and you have to replace they them. They you got to replace them, and it's not cheap to replace. You do get like a $6,500 tax credit the, the when you install them. So, so the, it's down to the real cost is in, Yeah, 23 okay. and some change. That's a lot. Um, so to get that back, the buyback, they say, on average, is 10 years. So you will say At which point you have to replace. At which point you've probably, you've probably already replaced or had some maintenance issues. Yuck. So, well, I'd, so I think there's some reliability and manufacturing QA stuff that they could probably improve on to make them last longer, some okay. durability things. So, so that's the, the very first thing that I think right off the bat needs to be 
they should think about working on. The next one, and this one is is really interesting to me. You don't get a tax credit for this one, but a small home wind turbine, or as you call it, <laughs> a wind turbine. <laughs> a wind turbine. <laughs> so these cost roughly. Uh, these are expensive. These things can be upwards of forty-five thousand dollars for the type that would power a home. The but size. purchased and installed for you. Purchased and installed, they run forever. So they're way they more some sort durable. Of there is there is a little bit of maintenance. You probably got to go in there and go kur, 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 with a little yeah, WD forty or something yeah. every now and then. Uh, presumably when it's not running. Uh, so it's actually not a bad price. You don't get a great tax credit on this one. I, I don't know why That's you get strange. different tax yeah. credits. And it uh, makes enough power for you? And it makes more than enough power. And interesting f- fun fact about the power. So whatever you produce in excess, power companies are required to purchase back, your right. excess. And my brother-in-law, it changed for him. But my brother-in-law, when he did this, eight, 10 years ago, he was actually getting like $8,000 back every year because of the excess power that his solar array Oh, well, then he definitely was getting well, back in that 10 years. But they changed the structure. Once and they you, realized. They were like, whoa. So, so yeah. So I think solar and wind are probably the two things that I think we really need to think about adding. Uh, the reason why they don't do the wind is they can be a little ugly, they can sometimes be noisy if there's some maintenance or you know bearing issues or something like that. So those are the first two, and I know we need to I, take a break, and then we'll cover a couple more. Yeah, before our break, I think that we mentioned in one of our other episodes that California, like new construction in some parts of California, are requiring solar panels. I think that's a great idea. I think so, too. And if you're requiring it, hopefully the cost comes down. Maybe the tax credit is better. A one-bedroom there costs $8 million <sighs> anyway, so why not? All right, so let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. I'm assuming, I mean, Elon has sponsored many, many of our shows, and I'm assuming as much revenue he's going to generate, it's Tesla Powerwall Incorporated. It is, in fact, not that. Uh, Once again this week, we do not have a sponsor. We do have someone uh, who we're shouting out right now, Bart M., who is catching up on episodes right now, and he's excited to find out who our first sponsor is. I don't have the heart to tell him still hasn't happened but bart m uh works a day job in a cool place we won't talk about that though and is an adjunct professor somewhere in tennessee which is pretty cool i think uh he tells his students to listen as we are a good fit listen to this we're a good fit to get them thinking about how to discuss a technical issue at a high level what do you think that is probably one of the greatest compliments I feel like that's pretty high praise for a class specifically for the stuff. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I feel like we're gonna have to send Bart and maybe his entire class. I know. Maybe some stickers. I feel like we should show up in Tennessee and like My talk goodness. to the class. Wouldn't that be awesome? Do a podcast. And I told him like, you know, we basically present all the time. We do yeah. videos. We do webinars. We've both done live events that like not only trainings but like uh, yeah. the thing in West Virginia where yeah. we do the whole pitch. I think it would be a great time. So, Bart, if down. you're interested, when you catch up to this episode, let us know. We'd love to come down. Well, we could talk to the students about how to not sound like an engineer whenever you're talking about things. Basically. Sometimes Nobody we wants sound that. bad. I suggested that he makes our podcast required listening for the class, but I don't know if that'll happen. Uh, Anyways, if you love our podcast as much as Bart and his students, why don't you go to iTunes or wherever, I think he says he listens on Dogcatcher, whatever that is, and uh, write us a review. The more reviews we get, the more money we make once we get a sponsor. And that's never going to happen. But uh, also subscribe. That helps you get our great new info even faster. Mm -hmm. And email us with ideas for topics, things we got wrong, or just to say hi and tell us how we changed your life at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. Sounds good. All right, back to homes. Okay, back to homes. So so those are the first two that I think are pretty obvious. Like I, I would put up a wind turbine. If I could, and we were allowed, I'd put up a wind turbine. <laughs> wind turbine. Okay, mm. so I'm just going to run through the yeah. rest of these uh, just so we make sure we have time. So, uh, solar water heating. So basically, this would replace a traditional. Um, now, now, what's solar water heating in that? 
the so like what are you using solar panels to heat it or you're just heating the water you're, with... so basically imagine a giant bladder that there's water channels there's a giant magnifying it. glass like frying it yes. like an ant so basically it's it's a it's it's a black bladder that absorbs oh. the, so it's as similar to what they do for heating pools if you've ever seen one of those homemade pool okay heaters. Yep. so um you can place these on your roof they can be you know in a backyard on top of a garage whatever it is these run anywhere from two thousand to five thousand and they say it only takes two years to recoup Ooh. but the challenge is this doesn't really work in super cold temperature locations and if you like really hot showers, there, there's only so much that this can do. So, so this is not for my home. Um, so one that I like, and this is the idea of smart homes, and there's no definitive cost savings here. Okay. Because um, there's all different ways you can get figure. But this is Apple Home, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, Nest, and the like. All those different technologies that turn your furnace on and off, to turn your lights on and off. They control, you know, if you're on vacation, you can put your refrigerator in like an eco mode. So... These are, I think, must-dos. If you're not doing this right now, you should be doing this. I'm going to hopefully next month, I'm going to upgrade to a Nest. Are you um, really? Or something similar. I know, I know uh, our good friend Troy uses a Nest, I believe. So maybe poke him about that. Yeah, and if Nest is listening or anyone like Nest would oh, like yeah. to donate a Nest to me, I could oh, do like a you could product be a... review or something Ooh. like that on it. Just saying, anybody out there that has any devices that you'd donate, like us donate to Donate too. Okay, uh, I, th I think they're great. I think it, I think the idea of connecting it to your 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 lights and your HVAC is great. That's very cool. So the one I'm interested in, so I have a rental property because I make the monies, um, <laughs> is an ultra efficient heat pump. So heat pump basically does what an air conditioner does and what a furnace does in one unit. Uh, these okay. things are two to two and a half times more expensive than a typical system but they're super efficient and you don't have a separate furnace you don't have a separate ac unit so you can kind of recoup so th these things run somewhere about six thousand dollars four thousand dollars in that range and if wow. you take a furnace and ac together mid-range they're going to be about three thousand dollars so it's a little more than double the cost but super efficient uh next up is advanced window control so this is if you've seen the windows that have the shades built into them, now they're doing electronic ones where there's like a photovoltaic cell and you hit a button and it like f turns black. Uh, these add 30% to whatever the cost of the window is. So if you're like, I got a quote for my house whenever we first moved in and it was like $22,000 to replace all the windows with brand new vinyl nitrogen fill i don't even know what they do double paint all that sort of stuff so i'd have to add 30 percent to that to get these internal Ouch. yeah it's it's expensive but it does give you a pretty big return because you can again control them potentially with a smart home Man, system loving mother earth has a big upfront cost it, does. it really does um so the next one i want to do this one i'm going to do a little interactive um uh -oh. so this is switching to led light bulbs and oh. i don't believe this at all what do you I mean you don't believe this at all? I just don't all. believe it. So, you think it's made up? So there's this website, and it's uh, Cree, C-R-E-E-B-U-L-B -E -E dot com. It's Cree a bulb. Cree bulb. So Cree is a manufacturer of LEDs, okay. and they make light bulbs. And I put in every light bulb in my house if I wanted to replace it. Mm -hmm. And it's telling me that I will save, potentially, I love they do that, uh, 323 dollars and 52 cents i love it says potentially and they put a 0.25 on it's like it's potential and you're gonna give me 50 cents change so <laughs> it's just it's just funny they say potentially they don't round it so right. they're telling me that i'm gonna save 323 dollars a year wow if i switch every light bulb in my house over the problem is that led light bulbs cost literally more than double what a typical incandescent is and I haven't had good luck. It's going to be in my rant a little bit later on. Um, but the interesting detail about this is they're telling me that an incandescent light bulb versus an LED light bulb, uh, number one, LEDs are going to be 30,000 hours. Typical incandescent is 1,000 for the lifetime. Sure. Uh, and the lifetime energy cost of an incandescent, this was amazing, is over $1,000. An incandescent 40-watt light bulb is going to be a thousand dollars over the life, and an LED is a hundred and forty-one. I see why you're having trouble believing this. That seems. I mean, maybe it's right. Why would they lie to me? It's on the internet. It's the internet. That can't be. But right. yeah. Ow. Yeah. That seems. It seems impossible. Interesting. Because if this was the case, 
like every incandescent light bulb manufacturer in the world would be out of business. Right. If this was really the case. So, yeah. So we want a quick light bulb story? Shoot. Uh, I got so many light bulb stories. But my most recent one, I have these big floodlights on the outside of my house. Okay. And they're up, so two stories plus up on the roof, so really tall. So I get out my biggest ladder, which is really tall and scary. And then I have one of those extension suction cuppy things. Okay. And I suction cup on, and I unscrew them. And I have new, beautiful LED ones that are going to last forever and a day. And I put it on, and I start screwing it in, and the suction cup unsuctions. And it just drops, and I catch it. And I'm like, great. And so I go, and I start screwing it back in, and it drops. And I, ooh, miss it this time, slams off the ground. How much is that light bulb? It, basically, that was like burning 20 bucks yeah. just watching this light bulb Threw fall. It, it hurt. Okay, back to homes. Okay, so I'm going to run through these super quick. So <laughs> Tesla is in this market, too. So Tesla has a power wall. And this doesn't generate electricity. It stores electricity. Mm -hmm. So you need some type of solar system to charge these. The wall itself is $7,000 for my size house. Okay. So basically, your size house, it's like $14,000. I don't think that's accurate. So if I wanted to get the solar Tesla tiles, so this replaces the, the panels roof. with tiles. The actual roof material itself is the solar panel. These are about $22,000. So they're cheaper. It's more so for... so. I it, thought you said the solar roof was thirty thousand. It is for the for the so it is cheaper, but you still need to have that. Oh, solar, you need the wall. Then. You need the wall oh. to integrate and to do all the power management okay. and stuff like that. So for me to do my house, I need roughly. I still need thirty thousand dollars to do this. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah, and then um, I like. This, Go ahead. This, this, this is one I never thought of. I never even heard of these before. They're called smart power strips. So these are things that you can actually hook up Bluetooth. And these things are about 30 bucks each and allows you to shut lights on and off without having to you know, have a super sophisticated smart house. Um, they're estimating that you can save um, or th they estimate that 20% of your energy costs are just plugged in electronics that you're not using. Hmm. Huh. So... That is pretty cool. And then composting toilets, huh? Yeah, that's composting gross. toilets, that's disgusting because I actually saw how they do it. Like, your turds basically <laughs> just sit in there and decay. Wow. Uh, they're about a grand. They're not cheap. Uh, we already talked about bamboo floors. I love the tiny home movement. I have a feeling me and my wife are going to move into a tiny home whenever Would you we be retire. Okay with that? I think so. Um, and then the very last thing I want to talk about, and this is something that a lot of new material uh, they're doing. They're doing thermal mass materials for energy, efficien energy efficiency. So these are homes that actually hold thermal mass or thermal temperature. So if you cool a house, it stays cool. If you heat a house, it stays hot. And all the different materials that they're using for new home construction have this in mind whenever they do it. Interesting. So. Uh, you didn't mention it, but I'm a big fan of geothermal heating and cooling. Now, you have to be in a be specific in right location yeah. to do so, but it it's apparently great for return. Yep. Uh, all right, so let's take a break before we move on to doing this on a bigger scale with buildings and do a little bit of Luke's rant. Okay, so this rant, like I said, is specifically about uh, LEDs. So I did this a little, maybe when we moved into our new house, I did the whole LED switch over and I bought about 20 LED light bulbs and we've only been here four years uh -huh. so we haven't been here for 30,000 hours <laughs> and I would say close to 50% of my LED light bulbs have stopped working. Yeah, I don't believe that. And I that have long. no idea and I, I, I installed them properly. In some cases, they're in the same overhead fan where there's four light bulbs and two of them just don't work anymore. So I have no idea if I'm buying a cheap brand. I, I mean, these were like Sylvania, so it wasn't like an off brand. Mm -hmm. um, so my rant is I, I think that this whole durability and lifespan thing, yeah, they might take more power, but I don't think they're more, I don't think they have the lifespan they claim. Like a perfect one, maybe. But on average, like I said, more than half of mine have already failed in less than four years. Boo LED. Yeah. So is I, that what we get? And then I have this? incandescent light bulbs. I got this light bulb in my basement. I've lived here for four years. I've never shut it off. It cost me like $17 million to run that light Clearly, bulb. Clearly. It just told us that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's literally never been off and has not stopped working. I'm kind of with you on that. I'm not buying into this whole LED light bulb saving me that much money. It probably saves, and I'm sure it saves energy, but I'm not believing that that light bulb just cost me $10,000 a yeah. day. 
All right, so moving on to buildings, skyscrapers, and the like that are going green. Okay. Uh, a bunch of them out there. Uh, there's the Pearl River Tower in Gangzhou, China. I've actually worked with Gangzhou Automotive on uh, some stuff bevo- before. You're so important. India Tower in Mumbai. I am important. Thank you. So, so these are like professional buildings that are empl- giant that are employing all these different tactics. Right, and, and more. Okay. Right. So this one, the India Tower in Mumbai is 126 stories tall. That's pretty big to be a green building. And the reason I point this one out, uh, it has like maximum usage of rainwater, natural light, ventilation, and it's really uh, the building that other buildings in India are now following for the construction style to, okay. to become more green. So before you do the next one, what do you think of these waterless toilets? I don't like that. Because all these no. new buildings I go into, no. they all have these Falcon water system, Mm-mm. waterless toilets, and they just smell like pee. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Okay. That's gross. Just check. Okay, no. just checking because that, that seemed to be a big thing for like green buildings. Especially and... for like office space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. One Angel Square, Manchester, UK. It's located in Manchester. Manchester. And... Thank you. I just. Don't we have an office there? I think we do. I think so as well. Anyways, it's a cooperative group's headquarter, houses 3,000 employees, and is one of the most eco-friendly buildings in Europe. Uh, it features things such as LED lighting included, gray water recycling, which I thought was interesting, uh, waste heat water recycling, and rainwater harvesting. So apparently it's legal there. Moreover, the building utilizes an oil that is used to power a CHP, Combined Heat and Power Feed System, system feed by Pure Plant Oil. And it's received a number of awards for its amazing aesthetics as well. Okay. One thing I've noticed about these buildings is they're all kind of funky looking. Mm-hmm. Like, to go along with this, they really make them kind of weird Yeah, they can't just make well. it look normal. Yeah. The Manitoba Hydro Place in Winnipeg, Canada, is one of North America's most efficient office buildings uh natural ventilation and passive design it features a geothermal system that heats and cools the building i bet canada is great for geothermal i would think and uh it has a rooftop garden and triple glazed windows because that seems important triple glazed i bet those are really expensive oh i'm sure uh there's a bunch of other ones the plazo italia this one This one's really interesting because it's fighting pollution by, quote, eating smog. So I thought that was kind of strange. So what's that mean? The entire outdoor surface of this building and part of the interiors consist of a biodynamic cement panel. In direct sunlight, they activate and it captures certain types of pollution in the air and converts them into a salt and basically purifies the air and the smog. That's so just imagine if we put those in like Beijing and ate up all that smog. I saw that something nice. where it wasn't a building, but it was next to highways. They build these vertical gardens that mm-hmm. absorb all of the you know the the pollution coming out of the tailpipes, and and they purposely put it right there uh, so that it doesn't you know go into the yeah, rest of the same, city. That same seems, concept. Yeah. yeah, seems like a like a no brainer if it looks yeah. good too, right? And so. of the air purifying cement is made out of recycled material, like scraps from uh, marble. And the converted salt is then just washed away from the building's exterior when it rains. So in addition to its air purifying, it also has photovoltaic glass rooftop to generate solar energy during the day. So I thought that was like the craziest I like that building. One. We also have the offices of the Dubai Future Foundation, and they are 3D printed houses. So if you remember, we mentioned them in the 3D yep. printed house episode. They're pretty cool looking. And the Crystal in London. This will be the last building I talk about. Uh, it's a Siemens office space and an event space. It's really crazy. Uh, As far as energy efficiency and green standards are concerned, it's the only building in the world to have both BREM and LED certifications, and I'll get into those in a second, making it one of the most efficient buildings on the planet. It runs entirely on electricity generated by solar panels, and the roof collects rainwater, sewage is treated and recycled, and it produces 70% less carbon dioxide emissions than a comparable office space. Wow. So good job, Siemens. I like that. So LEED, Leadership in Energy and Environment Design. That's a set of rating systems, and I think it's the more popular one, like the most common one in the U.S., right. 
uh, for the design, construction, operation, and maintenance of green buildings uh, by the U.S. Green Building Council. Then B-R-E-E-A-M is the Building Research Establishment Environmental Assessment Method. That one's too long. Yeah. In Germany, they have the DGNB. Japan has a CASBEE. And Spain has the VERDE. Not so fun fact. Shoot. Buildings account for 18% of global emissions today, or the equivalent of 9 billion tons of CO2 annually. Oh, man. If new technologies and construction are not adopted, uh, the emissions could double by 2050. So that's going to be 36%. That's so terrible. you mentioned it in, in our shout out for a different episode. We had one of our, our, our longtime listeners talk about green building not being sustainable. I, I think what they might not take into account is what it takes to make the solar panels, what it takes to, because these are made in a factory and is that factory in itself lead certified and green? Yep. At some point, the environment's being affected. And I, I feel like if you trace all the way back to what it takes to make a solar panel, at some point, something is negatively impacting the environment. Hopefully not as much, but I, I think that's where the balance happens because I think obviously doing solar and obviously doing all this, but the manufacturing of the raw materials that make the building, I think is probably the next step. Yeah. And I think that's the, the our, our listener that, that sent in that note. That's probably what he's referring to. Probably. I did want to take a couple minutes to gush over Pittsburgh. We're and pretty green. Kind of help out the rep because a lot of people still think of us as a steel town and mm -hmm. blah, 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 and dirty and gross. And that's not the case. Not at We're all. We're really cleaned up, really nice. And we have a few great examples, such as the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. Not only does it house the furry convention for Anthrocon every year. I feel like that's probably the last thing we need to know about, but uh, go on. <laughs> it was, it's the only convention center in the world with LEED certifications of gold in new construction and platinum in existing in building. In the world? Yeah. It's the first green convention center in the world's largest green building. The center capitalized on its environmentally smart structure, utilizing daylight as it's all windows for heating and everything else. There's also the Phipps, Cons the Phipps Center for Sustainable Landscapes. Have you been to Phipps Conservatory? I have. I've never been to this building. Is it different? It's a newish building there. Okay. It's one of the Earth's greenest buildings, and it's open to Pittsburgh. So Phipps Center for Sustainable Landscape basically has all this cool stuff. It's like a learning place. Okay. And it's completely sustainable. It has the platinum certification in 2013, and it just like is runs itself. Okay. It's really an amazing place to go learn about all of this. Carnegie Science Center's PPG Science Pavilion uh, has the gold certification. Uh, PPG Paints Arena. I thought this one was very interesting. So home to our Pittsburgh Penguins, who just are tired of winning Stanley Cups, yeah, apparently. They, they basically have to let somebody else win. Right. Good job, Washington. Way to go. Anyways, uh, it's the first LEED, LEED, gold certified major sports venue in the country. The venue seats 18,087 people in honor of Sidney Crosby's number 87. I thought that was interesting. Uh, the center uses 40% less water consumption by volume, uh, and thanks in part to the natural light and efficiency, it boasts 31% per reduction in energy That's costs. That's pretty impressive. And then we have, in 2006, the Children's Museum got Silver Lead Certification from the U.S. Green Building Council. So good job, Children's Museum. And the last one I want to shout out to is our friends at PNC, because I think they'll sponsor us soon. I'm sure they will. They have the First Side Center, and which was silver certified, and now they also have the tower at PNC, and that's our newest skyscraper, mm -hmm. which is really cool and funky looking, but it is the corporate headquarters for PNC, and approximately 800,000 square feet, 33 stories. Uh, it was purchased by PNC, and deconstructed everything around it to make space for the tower, the estimated cost was $400 million when announced oh, in 2011. Wow. But now it's like one of the greenest high-rises out there using all sorts of cool technology. So do you think Heinz Field, so we're talking about our sports venues, do you think Heinz Field is in... I mean, they have a lot of big troughs. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they have one giant urinal for everybody. I, uh, I feel like a structure like that, it's probably hard to be because, because it's exterior. It, everything's be... outside. Yeah. It's big and cementy. It's probably tough. It's probably tough to measure, first of all, and it's 
tough to find places to to make it more efficient so yeah ppg okay. paints arena though very cool how efficient it is i've never been there for a penguins game have you been there for a concert or anything i was there i was there for one concert i've only been in there once i think yeah it's a really nice it's arena. a nice nice place i yep. like it all right well i think we learned a lot i did like the homes part you're right it was wonderful but that's uh that's about it what okay. do you think i think it's a good idea all right well until next time see ya